In this video, I'm going to focus in on the media settings and the library that we have within our WordPress website. And you can see that I'm logged in here to the dashboard. Now, there will be some slight differences just between the hosted version of WordPress and a WordPress.com version of it. So we'll see slight differences there, but for the most part, they'll be pretty much the same. Now, the media is going to focus in on objects that we'll add to our web page posts, like photos or PDF files or videos that we want to upload. And so we'll take a look at adding that stuff to our web page and how it gets uploaded and where it will be located at. So let's go ahead and click on or hover over settings and click on the media link and we'll go ahead and take a look at these settings. Now for the most part they're going to be the same between this WordPress.com and a hosted WordPress website and especially when we first start off here with the sizes. Whenever we upload a picture to our library we have the default size that we upload it with which is going to be whatever size we have and most people will format their photos before they upload it to the WordPress website with the sizes and the color changes and anything you may need to or cropping your image to get it up and look the way that you want it to before you actually put it in your website. After we upload our image we will have some default sizes or some preset sizes that we can use to manipulate our photo. Now the reason why we have some of these is because certain themes that we'll have for our WordPress website may be certain pixels uh, wide and what we could do is we can manipulate one of these sizes to fit a um, width of a post or something that we're working with or even possibly the sidebars and so forth within our website. So we could manipulate these to make it fit exactly the size or dimensions that we want. Now I will tell you the thumbnail sizes by default are 150 by 150. Some people may like them smaller for a thumbnail, maybe 100 by 100 or even 50 by 50. So you can manipulate the size here. I will tell you you can always put in your custom size whenever we insert a photo into our post. So these aren't so necessary to actually change and manipulate. But if you want to use something that's common like a medium size and it maybe need to be modified just a little bit or the large size, you can definitely change those sizes for when we insert our photos into our particular web page. Now most of everything else here you probably won't be messing with or focusing in on. I do want to show you that if we worked on a hosted WordPress website the settings are a little bit different in the fact that we can choose where we want to upload our photos to. Now they didn't give us that option on WordPress.com but within here you can see that they're telling us it's going to be put into a folder called WP content and then there's going to be another folder inside of there called uploads and that's where all of our images and all of our media is going to be uploaded and stored within our WordPress website itself and we'll see that when we look at the links for where our actual images are located within our WordPress site and we have the option of overwriting that if we wanted to now I'm not going to do any overwriting for this we also have the option of how our images are going to be uploaded and by default and this is the same thing for WordPress.com we're going to go ahead and upload them into a month and year based set of folders and we'll see that so that we whenever time we upload like it's April of 2012 right now whenever we upload it's going to have a 2012 folder and a 4 for the month of April folder for me so that the next month it's going to change it to a 5 and so forth so we'll look at that when we look at our actual library itself so let me go back to the wordpress.com website and I'm going to go ahead and click on media and it's going to take us to where our library is going to be located. Now I currently don't have any images or any files uploaded here to my media so we'll go ahead and show you how to do that while we're going through. Also notice that if you're using WordPress.com you do have a 3 gigabyte upload space by default that you're going to be limited to. Now I'm going to recommend that if you're doing movies or videos of some sort you probably should use a third party site like YouTube to actually do all your uploads through and then you can embed that into your posts rather than taking up all your space but it's up to you if you have your own videos that you want to put on here yeah, you definitely can do that as well but I typically would save my media library for PDF type files or pictures that we have here to work with and we'll see that when we do an upload so you can either hit add new here or you can come over here and after you've clicked on media and you can choose add new and we can add objects here to our library and you'll see that the different file types that we have here to work with the different JPEGs, the PNGs, the GIFs, the PDFs, you've got also office documents that you can use as well and you can see there's a variety of office file extensions that we can upload to our library so anytime we want to upload something that's not just plain text within my post this is where I'll want to go ahead and do this. We do have a upload limit size of one gigabyte. You can see that right there, maximum upload size on the WordPress.com site. So I'll show you how to go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and choose Select Files, and we're going to allow us to browse our particular computer for the files that we're looking for. And I do have a file or two. Let's see, I've got the bike picture. I'm going to go ahead and open. 
and you'll see that it's going to go through and start uploading it. It will say crunching here in just a second. And sometimes that happens really fast and you can see now the image has already been uploaded. So we can see the details of our upload here. And I've got the option of changing the title of the particular uh, picture that I have here to work with. Alternate text. Now this is going to be great for some of the browsers that we have. If we hover over the image, you may see a little tag up here that tells us a little bit about this image. So you may want to put a slight description and you'll notice it's going to be a small one. So just a few word description of what we've got. You've got a caption, you've got a full description you can have. But you'll also notice the URL. Anytime that I were to link to this particular photo itself, or if I were to give my picture for other websites or anybody else that's out there and wanted to give them the link to this particular picture, this is the full location. So this is the full file path of the particular folder. Notice it says 2012 and you've got the 04 for the month that it was in and then you've got the name of the picture and the file extension. So this is the full URL for the particular file and we'll use that later on when we try to upload files into our posts and if we were to use code as far as HTML tags, then we would want to use the full URL itself. So this file has been uploaded. I can go ahead and choose Save All Changes after I've made my changes to the particular file. And you can see now that this picture is uploaded to my library that I've got. And so I'm going to go ahead and do one more. I also have a PDF file that I'm going to go ahead and upload. So I'll just go ahead and choose Add Now or Add New, Select Files. And I'm going to scroll and find, there it is, a manual.pdf. I'll go ahead and open that. And you'll see that this is going to go ahead and upload as well. and it's gone ahead and already uploaded. Now I will tell you there have been times where during the upload process it seems like it stalled and uh, after doing a quick refresh on my page it'll appear. So if you ever have that happen try to do a refresh on your website itself and see if that just on the browser right here and see if that'll actually allow you to see the media that you have now in your library. But you can see I can do the changes here for this particular file that I've uploaded. It's a manual and you can see that I put in the manual I also have the file URL, so this is slightly different than a photo. It doesn't have some of those same options that we can go ahead and change, but you'll see the full URL, and again, it's 2012 which is the year and the month that I've uploaded it, and then the name of the particular object that I've uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to save all changes, and we can go in anytime we want to, and we can modify these objects that I've gone ahead and uploaded. So you can see that I've got the edit and edit. I can also delete them and if I wanted to view the object I could definitely view the object itself. So let me just go ahead and click on the view for this picture that I uploaded earlier. And what it went ahead and did was it put it into my website into a temporary view and if I scroll down I can see the full view of this picture that I have uploaded. So you can see that there. You can see the full size of the image itself and we can get, definitely go back in and if I were to click edit I can go back and edit the details to my media itself. So like I said, I can go back at any time. So this is how we would upload media and make changes to the media settings within my particular WordPress website.